Hello guys and welcome back to the letter. How are you doing? Uh think this is for a new week. <laughs> and then timeline's getting a little jumbled, but it's fine, it's fine. Banter ban dude, I'm banter starved. I haven't bantered in uh forever. Because <laughs> we don't have an animated banter over in the opening. Just some scary banter. I uh like an hour ago I just watched or I just finished watching the new horror movie, um, The Fear Street something. You know, that horror movie that came out recently that's, like, part of a trilogy and an adaption of the R.L. Stein series, I think? I don't know, I've never, <laughs> I've actually never heard of it, never read it, so. No nostalgia factor. I mean, I did like Goosebumps as a kid. I'm guessing Fear Street was, like, the older not not probably not adult but like teenager version um i i liked it it was all right <laughs> um i usually don't like teen horror movies i guess stuff in the vein of uh the it movies or um the scary stories to tell in the dark i thought those movies were not great um but this one i was fine with i mean i literally didn't get scared besides studying little spooked by a set stall jump scare <laughs> which was just a gay jump scare but somehow that got me because it looked freaking weird dude. um but no it's all right nothing to write home about but it was a fun time i mean i guess saying that uh <laughs> the, the horror movie didn't scare me at all um isn't the greatest endorsement but yeah I mean, as someone who's consumed, you know, we made that horror movie list a billion years ago on the channel, and it's way more now. It's probably in the 300s now, like, watching over 300 horror movies, you kind of, like, I don't even really expect to get scared. I just find it entertaining. But, that's all I got. <laughs> Anyways, let's start back. Um, we are in the Mary Ann route. Um, we started off, uh having a little party because our friends got engaged or just got married. I'm pretty sure it's, she's getting engaged, though. Um, forgot their names. Haruka and Katie, I think. That was fun. Um, got some singing. And, I mean, finally getting into Marianne, the most mysterious character. I mean, Luke is kind of mysterious just because he's a little sketchy, but, like, the most, uh, just mysterious character. And she seems like a fun person. But we kind of got into a spicy situation with Luke doing some drunk flirting. And now we're, uh, back home. And, you know, this is just going to be awkward. Um, because it also seems like Marianne has a potential connection to Hana from her past. So there's a lot of ways this can go down, depending on... What her connection with Hana is, to be honest. Did she, you know, I have this sort of suspicion that uh, she might have a romantic feelings for Hana back then. Just because of, you know, I, I felt it before, but then the friends also joked that she might like girls. Um, you know, was Hana one of the bullies? <laughs> then that can definitely change this dynamic. Was Hana the only friend? And, you know, I guess romantic feelings can go both towards the bully or the romantic friend. It's a, it's an exciting time. I love this kind of drama stuff. I don't know if they're actually, we're actually gonna, you know, spice it up with Luke. Or is he gonna realize that she's the employer? Or is that something gonna stop them? This we'll just have to see. Got the journal going. Tuesday. Marian and went to the crawl bar, also called the Galway Shawl, by its patrons for a night out with her close friends Cam and Haruna. Okay, obviously I got Katie wrong. Did I say Haruna? I think I said Haruka. <laughs> when they left, Marianne was seen with a stranger whom she only referred to as Whiskey. In turn, she was called Mint. Not a good look. Ah! They mean that. There's our relationship bar. Um, I mean, the fact that Hana's kind of boosted might be a, a sign, I guess. I didn't really realize that. Everyone else is fine. We kind of fucked it with a li Isabella a bit. Oh, wait, it's neutral. Maybe I balanced it out, but I did make a bad choice with Isabella. 
the relationship bio is kind of funky because like you're doing past stuff too but does not like ashton does anyone like ashton that's not a friend <laughs> doesn't like zach I probably she liked Isabella more than uh everyone else. Well, anyways, let's uh let's continue. I don't know how this will affect our shipping mindset. Cause I do kind of like Hana and Luke, even though it's not the greatest relationship. I just roll that way, dude. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see how our fellow weeb is and decide what we do later. Anyways, uh let's read back. The best thing about having my condo so close to the pub is the ease of access. As long as I can still stand and watch, I can make, make it home. Maybe I need help from a kind neighbor or two to help me with the last light if I've really gone overboard on the alcohol. But I always made it home. Sometimes with company. Of course that always comes with complications, especially with the real clingy ones. Well, I guess she would be bi then <laughs> if she's coming home with guys, right? Maybe. I don't know, dude. Don't ask me. But it isn't anything... But it isn't anything a good tip about stalkers to the building security can't fix. <laughs> I'm always nervous, though, even if this isn't the first time I've done this. And the first few minutes when we enter my room are a few agonizing minutes where I try not to panic. Okay, Mac. So far, so good. Don't let him smell your fear under all that liquid courage. He'll leave sooner or later, and I'll never have to see him again. Wink, wink. Just like every other man before him. I like to say to myself that man, the men I've brought to my place were more scared than I was. That there's no fear when I look into Whiskey's eyes. Only delight. Yeah, he's... He's... He's very egotistical. I don't think he'd get scared entering someone's room. <laughs> When he starts touching me, I don't even hesitate when I push him against the door. Roughness is to be expected. And as long as he sticks to the script, everything will go smoothly. We'll have our little tumble in the sheets, he'll leave, and we'll forget about it. Unlucky. If somebody asked what I really wanted, I would have told them I wanted a bed of roses, chocolates, and music. Maybe in an Irish castle. But all I really want is her, and that's never going to be a reality. That was my fault, of course, because I was afraid, because I was a coward. They would never hold a candle up to her. He was the light of my life. Oh, the setup for this is so funny, dude. <laughs> and I had to let her know. I can't even be bothered at the thought of her. Just the single thought of her makes my resolve to see this affair through waver. Wait. Oh, not gonna happen. What is it now? <laughs> He's so, so annoying, dude. <laughs> yes, what is it now? What's it gonna be, Marianne? To sets or not to sets? Dude, how about we not sets? You know, we're going Iron Man mode, our choices matter, and we don't take anything back. I want Tana and Luke to fix their relationship, because I think it's entertaining. Sorry, Han. Oh, not Hana. Um, yeah, Hana. Sorry, Mar Marianne. This is wrong. We're both drunk. You're married. Yo, look at that boost. Look at that boost. Luke respects it. Yes, that's good. Cause Luke actually cares about Hannah deep inside. He's just a freaking mess of a man. Holy shit, this is amazing. I'm a genius, <laughs> dude. I'm telling you. It's meant to be. Yo, look at me, dude. Okay, yeah, so... Loot definitely... I don't... Just the fact that it jumped so big, because I've never seen Loot's bar jump that high. Means that he definitely, like, loves Han. Like, you can see it, dude. I don't know. Aiden, you, you support a toxic relationship. No, I want to fix it, because I can see its potential as the romance master. Hello? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I watched enough J dramas to know everything about romance. Don't at me. <laughs> no, but l l let's continue. I I that's kind of hype though. And this is 
is wrong. Don't you think it's a bit fucked up that we're about to have sex and we're just calling each other by the drinks that we had? It is very sudden. How messed up are we? Doll, shut up with the ethics and morality talk. It is seriously putting me out of the mood. <laughs> well, Luke just doesn't seem to be, or Luke doesn't seem to be too appreciative, but maybe when he's not drunk. If you want to leave now, whiskey, I understand. I mean, with how smashed you are, it'd probably be best for you to sleep the night unless you want to be mugged. <laughs> but I won't stop you. And this isn't going to happen. Get out of here, whiskey. Bloody hell. Cock flat. That's me, baby. If you're not part of the ship, you don't get any action. Of course, he's annoyed at me for putting off our night of sexual congress. But no means no. And beyond the spewing of a few profanities under his breath, he surprisingly simmers down soon enough. I was worried for a moment that he might try to force something. Instead, he meets a show of fixing his suit and smoothing down his hair before making himself comfortable on the nearest seat he could find. What are you doing then? You have a guest in your home. Put the damn kettle look on. Look at Luke, man. How, how can you not like them? I'm pretty sure a long time ago, because, you know, we've been on break, but someone said Luke was their favorite character. I like Edo characters too. I don't know if he's my favorite, but I mean, we'll definitely have to see until we get to the arc. Again, I think Hana and Zachary's route was really fun. Well, Isabella's was probably the spookiest, just as, you know, it's the newest. But yeah, so far, so good for the routes. I'm liking Marianne's. Dandelion tea if you have it. But I suppose all you have are those shitty tea bags from the store. Thanks, Luke. We're Irish, we don't drink tea, right? I don't know. Do Irish drink tea? <laughs> if it isn't for the absurdity of this turn of events, I would have flipped him off for thinking I have no taste. But in the end, I just laugh. All I got are cans of Korean ginseng and lemon balm, though. No dandelion. I've never had dandelion tea, either. Without a second thought, I do wet the tea. That's three minutes to get the kettle to a boil. Three minutes where we can say nothing to each other. I mean, what do we even say to the guy I was going to sleep with until I changed my mind? I doubt he's in the mood to talk about the influence of Troyes on Mallory. It's still unusual by the time we are both seated on my bed with muds of tea in hand. Just so you know, whatever is going on right now is a lot stranger and fucked up than the one night stand. <laughs> it's pretty funny. We are two messed up individuals by your logic. Ooh. Everything is messed up, if you ask me. War? Terrorism? Famine? Poverty? Loved ones and loved lost? Oh. Thanks, Luke. This whole world is a cesspool. Society. <laughs> the dead air is telling when it fills the room once more. One would think that this is a perfect time to burst, to spill whatever issues that made us fucked up, made us the fucked up person that we are today. And it is. But I guess some part of me would rather not put the weight of my problems on somebody else's shoulder. Wouldn't be fair to leave that to a person who I don't even know if we'll ever see each other again. Really harping on that. <laughs> Sooner rather than later, we both pass out on my bed, mud stuff forgotten on the floor. What a wholesome ending. Didn't be cursed yet. We didn't even go to the house yet. Beast. No, no scares tonight. I already had enough for the... It's not scary, scary movie. <laughs> I, I filled my quota. But I wait, whiskey is already done. Thanks for the tea, Mary. Nazian? I've never seen an R spelled like that. Also, you probably looked through our shit, huh? <laughs> a bottle of painkillers and a note on the table are the only evidence that I wasn't alone last night. I don't even question where these are from or just how he knew my real name. Yeah, you looked through shit. <laughs> I'm just grateful for something to help with a hangover. I guess that's... Have you ever seen an R spell like that? That's literally the wrong way. Is that how you do it? In oh. I see it. See? If you put the line down here, it just straight through. Such a fancy, weird R. Thanks for... Yeah. Also, his freaking F's look like a T. Also, it's thunderstorming. Great mood. 
Might as well. New journey. New journal just dropped. Marianne and Whiskey went back to her condo after having one too many drinks. However, Marianne changed her mind about the one night stand and ended up sharing tea with them instead. The next morning, the stranger left nothing but a note and painkillers. When do we. Yeah, so the 21st. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the 21st. So it is tomorrow, so we have a day before. Itana. Might as well. I have a job to do. Unless. Oh, well, we're on the 22nd. <laughs> okay, passing that, and now she's thinking about drinking on the job because she knows about loot. And may or may not confirm her suspicions about ha who's Hana or whatever. It isn't often that I think about drinking on the job. But after meeting the rights yesterday, really makes me want to break my self imposed rules. Because first off, fucking damn whiskey was fucking damn Mr. Right. <laughs> and to top it all off, they had somehow forgotten to inform me that they didn't own the Ermagard mansion yet when they hired me. What what sort of person does that? Ugh, rich people. Sounds pretty cool to me. <laughs> I wish I could do that. <laughs> I could do nothing but twiddle my thumbs at this, however. Twiddle my thumbs and wait for the ghost signal. It's not like I can accept other small project, smaller projects. This is a big job, and I should be ready to start on it at any time. Not to mention that my PA practically begged me to be patient and wait this out. It's a hard decision to agree, but I did so in the end. Besides, I'm doing this for the immigrant mansion, not for any uh, anything or anyone else. I have a headache wherever, whatever I do anyway. I'd go to the pub again, but seeing what happened a few days ago, I'd rather not end up in bed with another potential client. It might be a huge leap in logic, but a library is the next best thing after the pub. What else happened on the 22nd? Isabella stuff. Just Isabella and the doctor. Mr. Clark. I have to go there anyway. I need more books for dad. Plus, I also need to return the ones I borrowed last time. Finding a new book or two to read for myself while I have nothing to do isn't such a bad idea either. So, on a Saturday morning, I find myself going to the only library in Luxembourg to, hopefully, cool off. Uh, after returning an Urzuli and a poetry book on Henry of... Pod Brandy. Brady? Pod Brady. <laughs> Asked the librarian about several titles on my list, though I don't have much luck on that front. Dialogue with Death has already been snatched, and she bl bluntly said that she did not keep our mathematical universe for someone who didn't return puts on time. I made headway at least when I asked about Siege and Rendition of Havana by Jacob. Jacobo de Pazulia. <laughs> If you count her snarling and pointing at the history section as headway, that is. The history section is devoid of any other except for myself and a redhead, though I'd wager I guess that red's just passing by to get to the classical literature section. So many books, so little time. Scanning the books and seeing so many wonderful titles gives me great pleasure. That's when I spot it. Hello, sailor. Why don't you come to mama? Cat? No, the book. I was like, what is that? What did she spot? <laughs> History of Luxembourg and Architecture, first edition. It's not the naval battle book I was looking for. No, it's even better. The newly acquired History of Luxembourg and Architecture, first edition too. I know, I just have to get it. I've been wanting to get my hands on this book for so long. The fact that there's only one copy proves to be a problem though. When Red reaches out for the... For at the same time as I do. Who is red? Rebecca? I think I had this first, miss. She's not really red. She's more pink. I bet she's doing that to research the Ermagerd. I can only stare her down when she refuses to let go of the book. Yeah, you don't mess with Rebecca, dude. She's one tough lady. Refusing to let go of it as well, I raise a brow at her in hopes that the fact that I was significantly taller than her would intimidate the girl. Nope. 
Even then, she refused with a rebellious look. This isn't exactly light reading, miss. I mean, do you even know which architect was at the forefront of 18th century Irish architecture? A beat. She blinks, and I can't help but smirk on my face. Which is wiped off when she opens her mouth. She's a school teacher, so she's... She's well-read, I assume. Edward Loret Pierce, who established the Palladian style through his work with Castletown House and the Irish Houses of Parliament. Gab done. This bridge was destroyed in this year to delay French troops while under the regency of Mary of Guise. This is not what I was expecting. Let's be honest, how many people would know these history facts? Aside from me, anyway. Going right to the obscure ones, aren't you? Easy enough. Tullybody Old Bridge in Clap Quiz. Scotland on the January of 1560, if we want to be specific. New friendships. Suddenly it's a game where we throw these history questions and facts at each other, back and forth in hushed tones unless we want to be thrown out of the library. After a while, it goes from some strange competition into this strange but friendly banter, if it could be called that. But as fun as it is, the exchange soon slows down until we're grinning at how odd this whole scene is. Marianne McCulloch, my desire for potatoes doesn't quite match what the stereotypes suggest. <laughs> Rebecca Gales, the Scots' supposed hatred for the English wasn't enough to stop me from teaching their little spawns. <laughs> <laughs> so cringe, dude. <laughs> By then, we had forgotten about our little tug of war, although she still holds the book in her hands. I had to let go of it without realizing when she answered my first question. History teacher, then? Got it in one. No wonder you gave me a run for my money. Now, if we're talking about architecture, I'd blow you out of the water. You're from where? Luxburn Uni? Oh, no. Just St. Goretti's. Oh. Is that... We've literally just heard that. Is that where Marianne graduated from? Maybe. Where do you find that journal? Uh. Nope. He went to Saint Sam Fan. It's it's where I heard Goretti somewhere, but who knows? Ah yes, Saint Goretti. You'd think Lestro would choose a more appropriate saint to name after themselves, especially when they have very young students. I don't know who Saint Goretti and is. I'm guessing you're an architect. If you All right. Quick knowledge check. Goretti. Goretti. Maria Goretti is an Italian virgin martyr of the Catholic Church, one of the youngest saints to be canonized. She was born... Uh, she was born to a farming family. Her father died at the, when she was nine, and then they shared a house with another family, the Senorales. Maria took over the household duties while her mother, brothers, and sisters worked in the fields. One afternoon, the, the other family's son made sexual advances to her. When she refused to submit to him, he stabbed her 14 times. She was taken to the hospital, but she died forgiving him. He was arrested, convicted, and jailed. During imprisonment, he repented. After 27 years, he was released from the prison and visited her mother to beg forgiveness, which she granted. He later became a lay brother in the monastery. And at 1970, she was... beatified? Oh. Adler, that's a saint. And canonized... 50? Huh. I don't know the... How to become a saint, but I thought they were like it was different than that. <laughs> the rough bat story, huh? You're so confident about the subject. Oh, here we go. Interior designer, Miss Gales. Please just call me Rebecca. You aren't one of my students, are you? Marianne, then. I could have said that I was an architect, but there's no point in explaining why I wasn't one anymore. So I've never seen you before. I'd like to think I've met every history aficionado in town. <laughs> I blame the rock I've been hiding under, of course. That, and I'm usually only here on the weekdays if time allows. Work often has me meeting clients on the weekends. Hmm, that must be interesting work. 
It allows for some creative freedom, sure. But it's like working with children sometimes. Though you probably have it harder working with actual children. The hardest part is convincing them that your idea is their idea. That sounds exciting. It is! <laughs> but isn't that true for any workplace, though? We just cross our fingers and hope there aren't any man children in charge of important things. Any big projects right now? I can't imagine that interior designing is a frequent thing. I'm working on the Ermengarde mansion. Lucky me. <laughs> that mansion. Inta. Wonderful. Breathtaking. I can't wait to start in it. Nice. Now that is beautiful architecture. A pause. Well, this says she wants to see something at my mention of the house. I'm not surprised. That place is certainly popular with the locals, especially the urban legends attached to it. In the next second, though, she seems to think better of it and drops what she's about to say. So, do you have a portfolio or anything I can take a look at? I'd love to see your designs. Maybe you have some on the tablet? I've met some designers before, and they're always going crazy over these virtual room apps or another. A tablet? <laughs> Please. Calacrates didn't need those silly eye tabs when he built the Parthenon. I certainly <laughs> don't need one to design a house. Old school, but it's like easier. <laughs> it's more convenient. The computer back at my place is all I have. I don't use tablets or whatever. <laughs> Why should I buy such an expensive gadget that will just get outdated within the year when I have when what I have is just as functional? That is me though, too. Also our phones, dude. I like never upgrade my phone unless it's literally breaking. I don't care about <laughs> New models of stuff in general. The traditional way had a far more personal touch, in my opinion. Not to mention, those smartphones are awful tools of procrastination. Also true. I can't even count on one hand the number of people I see going outside only to have their eyes glued to the things. And fuck touch screens. They're evil things that make typing what should have been a simple task harder. Maybe in the beginning, typing's pretty. Fine. I do have an For online portfolio now. if you'd like. I can Speaking or thinking of the devil seems to have summoned it because before I can carry on, Rebecca's attention wanes as she pulls out her mobile. For what I can only assume is a call, she gives me an apologetic look before she's standing up and excusing herself. Off farther into the aisle she goes for some privacy. I do my best to give it to her as well, trying to tune her out. Well, is something wrong? Lunch at the coffee house? Uh, sure, I can make it. I'm not too far, I can be there in ten. But with how quiet the surrounding is, she can't blame me if I overhear snippets of her conversation. When she returns with a sheepish look on her face, I know that our friendly chat has to be cut short. <sighs> Sorry, I have to go and meet with some friends. It's fine, totally fine, no need to even apologize. About the book. It's mine. Her embarrassment increases twofold when she realizes she is holding onto the history of Luxembourg and architecture. I don't give her the time to think about it as I put a hand up and shake my head, fishing out a pen and paper from my bag along with one of my business cards. I hand them over to her. You know, I'm busy with work, so I might not even be able to take a peek at it any time soon. You can go ahead and have it. But you'll have to ring me up when you're returning it just so I can snag it right away, deal? You made quick work, penning her number down and handing it back to me with a grin. Deal. Just message me during school hours, of course. You have a good day then. You too. Bye bye. With Rebecca gone, I'm left alone standing in the history section. Although my original plans were simply to sit down and read a good book, a little pop quiz, if you could call that, made the time pass by without any of us even realizing it. It was fun, and I do believe I made a new friend. Good job, Marianne. Even with the talk of lunch, however, I don't feel like grabbing a bite to eat. There are still other books to be read, and I'm hoping to find something that will help me while I worked with the rights. Something like, how do you deal with arseholes professionally 101, just in case. I've dealt with a lot of uppity, snooty, and rich clients before, but it's still better to be safe than sorry. Because Loot Wright has 
just hits the fucking cake, and he probably manages to eat it too. It's as if the world is conspiring me to keep me from my me time, as my mobile vibrates in my pockets the moment I find something of the shelves. Of the classic literature section. Marianne McCulloch, Charlie Rose Design speaking. Rose, you're back from the dead. Uh, we never hear you again. <laughs> but I just wanted to check in and tell you that we've got the clear to hand over the documents. Madam Wright told us that we should forward the floor plans to you. Already? How did they go through the process so fast? Surely there's so many red tape to even acquire the forms in the transferring of rights? No matter how rich the rights are, it shouldn't be this quick, right? It was a little sketchy, but don't mind. I'd actually like a physical copy of the floor plans. Oh, I, I suppose that's fine. I'm not at the office right now, but I can inform the Santos of your request. I'll make sure to drop by the office after lunch if that's fine. Not a problem. Right. Well, cheers. Right. Cheers. Cheers. I don't know. I just don't. Is there some sort of deeper miscommunication when we last met? These things take time. It's been, what, a day? Less than that, even? There isn't even a point in trying to make sense of these people who seem to be larger than life. Journey update. Timeline. 20 seconds. Oh, there it is. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at Rebecca looking nice. A picture. Marianne befriended Rebecca Gales during a visit to the library. Marion received a call from Rose Trooper afterwards, informing her that the Ermagerd Mansion's floor plans were ready for pickup at the office. This wasn't where, uh... When did... freaking Isabella get assaulted? <laughs> it was definitely after Rose's death. Okay, so we're good. As it looks like I'm on the clock starting today, I might as well eat. Grabbing some fish and chips from one of the street food stalls, I find a table to spend time with a copy of Marquis de Sade's The Crime of Love since Roberta left with the book I wanted. I've read this one before along with the rest of his works. This would be the 18th time in that. Jesus. But it's always nice to read through it again when I don't have the time to enjoy something new. Besides, when you're dealing with people so filthy rich that they just end up Plain filthy, you need a good old Marsh Marquise? Marquise, Marquise. Sound advice. La blessure se trouvant sans aucune sorte de conséquence. You know, as someone who learned French through elementary school, sounds good to me. <laughs> the wound being without any consequence. I literally don't know how to speak French anymore. I just drop that. I'm really bad at learning new languages. So I just won't learn any new language. Of course, it's folly to think that things have no consequence when everything actually does. Briar Realty Corporation's Luxembourg branch isn't too far from the city center, just a few blocks away, and I can easily eat and walk. I'd rather use this time to rest before I go into a flurry of activity. No doubt there'll be so much to do once we get hands on we get hands on with the mansion. Still a lot better than working on another condo, at least. Surely, no matter how much BRC and the old owners put into the restoration and pres preservation of the place, any bid repairs would be superficial at most. I'm quite certain that, in their haste to sell the property, they did a rush job. It isn't an infrequent thing to do, despite how it's frowned upon. There will be a lot of hidden issues that I will need to weed out. I have to make sure I find every single one of them, especially the more serious damages. Structurally, integrity is definitely on the top of the list we will have to consider. The building might look sturdy, but is centuries old. That alone will likely pose a few problems here and there, putting limitations on what we can do. Besides, despite how much I detest these rich snobs, it can pay rather handsomely, so long as I do an excellent job and do more than necessary. Those two things always made sure the referrals keep coming. I don't even have to hunt down projects for myself. 
<laughs> this uh, yeah. office has some bad vibes, though. <laughs> Last time we were here. But I do go up to the BRC's office. I can't help but stop and stare when I enter the building. With the lunch hour closing, employees should have been back already if they still aren't filtering through the doors. I get that it's Saturday, that people probably feel tired and lazy to be working on a weekend, but they're still on the clock and not bumming about wasting company time extending lunch breaks and cigarette sessions. Oh no, is this our first spook? Spook of the route? <laughs> of the POV? The office is spacious. As it is with these big corporations, each person is given their little space of what is usually a 2x2 two two meter cubicle. Man, I can hear the thunder. It's getting... Getting rainy, huh? Don't cut off the power, please. <laughs> There's a lot more empty chairs than there are actual people working at their desks. It reminds me far too much of my days at the... At... Where... Horace Kova projects during the massive layoffs due to the Irish economic crisis. But it isn't just that, though. Everything is as quiet as a grave. It's as if these people are, are merely ghosts. Speaking of ghosts, Santos comes through the door looking as if she's just seen it. Okay, so there are... Never mind. <laughs> we are not alone. I remember this scene now. She looks at me wide-eyed like a deer caught in headlights ready to board at any moment. I'd ask out of concern, but I feel it's not my position to do so. Is it because we fucked up the discussion? No, that's like in the future. I don't fucking know. What if it's something personal? I'd simply be overstepping my boundaries. Really? It's none of my business. I presume that Miss Cooper told you why I'm here, Miss Santos. Huh? Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. I just got back from lunch, you know? But it won't take too long. Don't worry. Of course it won't. This whole project has established itself to be a matter done in haste. I do hope it doesn't mean that people are being careless in their duties. She flinches and she looks like she doesn't quite know how to respond to that. Thankfully, instead of operating her mouth, she leads the way towards her station and goes to fetch the floor plans. It won't take too long, as she said, but it does take a bit. I expect to compose herself, most likely. You know, we usually just email these things. Yeah, old lady. I prefer the real thing. <laughs> not that you would know. You probably have your nose stuck in front of a smartphone when you're not. And even when you should be working playing those mindless addictive games. Actually sounds like a boomer. <laughs> I definitely wish Chris would stop playing that bat cat thingy during the work hours too. I know what you mean. Digital painting is nice, but nothing beats the smell of real paint. Not that I go and smell paint like a crazy person, but... You know, the real thing is different. Wait, what? Yes, nothing is quite like the real thing. Yeah, she, she's an aspiring painter. Checking out the floor plans, I see that I'll have a lot going for me. Now, I know how Ray felt when he found the Central Park West building floor plans from that one movie. This is why I became an architect, architect in the first place. Who at it? Crazy. It's double the spooks. Let's see. I'm just looking. We haven't seen the theater. We've seen the study room. That was where we saw freaking Kyoko in the movie. I think. Hallway, bedroom, balcony, basement, hall. There is a basement. And then there's the kitchen cellar. Kitchen cellar is a cursed place. We haven't seen the basement yet, though I'm fairly certain we might see it in the future. Jacobian style at its finest, it's a thing of beauty. Looking at these gorgeous rooms, the delicate harmony between empty spaces. And speaking of empty spaces, there's something rather odd about these ones. I feel a bit silly saying it out loud because I've never lived in a big house, let alone a mansion. But during the tour, I had the distinct impression that the rooms were... bigger. Maybe the scale is wrong? It's not much of a problem, and it is an old house. There had been little details here and there that I would like to have addressed during the open house too. But it was all forgotten in the wake of Miss Santos' incident and the trouble with the ownership. The wine cellar is going to be a problem. I shudder to think what sort of repairs they did to that place. You don't want to go in there. <laughs> there might have been things that were swept under the rug. 
pushed up to the corner of the rooms and hidden away in barrels. Water damage could have been covered up. There had been floods due to the heavy rains in West Inland just last year. After all, and if there's any sort of damage to the house's foundation, it's going to be a lot of work. I was not able to look at the attic as well. For all I know, a whole family of vermin could have made their nest there. Working with pest control is always the worst. The sheer size of this place is staggering. Even if I did, just say it was a lot smaller than I thought. It might just have been biting off more than I can chew, but who doesn't like a good challenge? First things first, I'll have to... So, do you want a coffee? The one from the staff room is pretty decent. Broke her concentration. There's really no need. I'm sure you have rules against it. Rules against bringing someone coffee? That's ridiculous. And even if there were regulations against it, nobody's really here to tell Sir John. I've already brought two mugs, and I'm not going to drink them on my own. <laughs> Come on. I have to stamp down my annoyance at being distracted. Seeing the girl, the young woman though, it looks like she has a lot on her mind. If the babbling is her way of dealing with straight thoughts, I'm not really the one she should be babbling to. How should I respond? We'll be nice, because we're a nice person. Boom! <laughs> why be, why be, why taint relationships? Unless you're tanking a ship. <laughs> I give her time to speak up. But when she just stares, I clear my throat. Yeah. You have something to say? And as the embarrassment creeps up her face, I snatch one of the coffees from her and take a sip. Too odd. Just thinking and speaking off the record. It must be fun what you do. You go to people's houses and you make them, well, pretty. You're sharing your art with them. It's a little bit more complex than that. But if you put it that way, it is fun. I wouldn't have done it for seven years if it wasn't a little bit fun, I guess. These big clients always have paintings in their homes. Do you have a supplier for art pieces? Yo, she's looking for the hookup. <laughs> I didn't expect to hear such questions from her seeing how she handled herself yesterday. I didn't doubt then why she assigned to an important sales like the Ermigrant Mansion despite the little accident she had. Now she just looks too young, too nervous and unsure of herself, although her enthusiasm must make up for that in spades. In fact, I wouldn't have believed it if she had introduced herself the way she is at the moment. By watching her now, she actually looks like she could still be in college. That's a bit like it too when I think about it. I thought she was a teen slumming it out in the mansion when I first saw her there lying on the ground. <laughs> uh, surprise, surprise, she turned out to be one of the estate agents handling the property. The clients usually support artists of their own choice. If they don't, I'm always happy to refer those that I know. That's cool. They're very picky. I don't think a hobbyist will have an easy time getting their work sold. Hey, I'll have you know I was a student of the fine arts. <laughs> and yet here you are selling property. Maybe you weren't a very fine student of the arts. Man, you're kind of being an ass, Marianne. Maybe I took that a bit too far after we chose the nice, nice choice. <laughs> She bites her cheek and she looks like she's barely holding herself back. It's not like I had a choice. She mutters it under her breath. I barely even hear it. But the hurt is there. And it makes me wonder what brought it on. Although it's understandable if her reason, but I think it is, very few people make it big in the art world. It... <laughs> I wonder, I really want to know where all these butterfly effects are happening, dude. <laughs> But we can't look at the tree or it will spoil the game. So, we're totally blind. <laughs> I can see why she'd be upset about it with that enthusiasm. I didn't have a choice when I left Ireland. It was that or years of unemployment. The recession and the toll it took in the construction industry was out of anyone's control. I don't know what choice she wasn't able to make, whether it's about her being at the art school or something else. But the world isn't a fair place. And the sooner she accepts it, the better. What are these butterfly effects? What did I do? Still with that forlorn look on her face, I can't help but sigh. The girl reminds me far too much of myself when I was younger. Well, if you're thinking of commissioning your paintings, I'll have to see your work first. I don't think we've ever seen an Isabella painting either. Oh, it's not. 
I didn't mean it like that. I don't have any paintings. Really? You sounded a lot like you still did art or want to. Now I'm starting to worry that you might just like the smell of paint. That's some good banter, though. I'm not a paint huffer, sheesh. <laughs> I just mean I don't make much anymore. I don't really have the time for it. The tools and materials aren't exactly cheap, either. Everything has a price. It sounds like you're making excuses for something you're presumably passionate about. If you really want to practice art, a little out of your wallet isn't much. It's not that simple. It's not? Life's simple. People just like to make it complex. That's a nice quote. <laughs> Speaking off the record, I have some advice for you, kid. Grow up, kid. Either go for what you want, or stop thinking about it when you have something else. That is unless you enjoy making yourself miserable, then by all means. You know, if you wanted to look at the floor plans without me bothering you, you could have just said so. I'm surprised this is like boosting the relationship, huh? <laughs> Would you have left me alone? So this is a weird, it's like a good conversation, but also like weird, <laughs> weird Let's vibes. Now, will we? Well, that kind of worked out. A stranger said it was in the room afterward. Isabella Santos drives herself with work the whole day to forget about the devastating new- Wait, oh, pff, wrong place. I was wondering. Here we go. Marianne visited BRC to pick up the floor plans. He was assisted by Isabella Santos, and the two shared a brief talk about art, which ended with Marianne leaving a piece of advice to Isabella. Grow up, kid. The strained air settles in the room afterwards. It doesn't help that she doesn't immediately leave as she said. She has said, lingering awkwardly by the door with that downcast expression. It's here that there's sh there's more she means to say, perhaps even to defend herself and her choices in life. Or is she expecting me to dish out more of that advice? It's an awkward affair, and I choose to hightail out of the realty office as quickly as I can. A great choice. Though I am able to keep myself professional at all times does not mean I like it. And seeing most of the day has already gone bef by before I realize it, I choose to head back to my flat instead. Despite today being a Saturday. No fun, but at least this way I can definitely avoid another unpleasant encounter. Considering how much I'll be seeing whiskey in the near foreseeable future, I have a feeling I'll need all the rest the weekend can give me. For the first time in a long while, excited as I am to work on the mansion, I cannot wait to be over and done with this project. Okay. Luckily, I was like, let's just continue uh, to the next day, because I was about to stop it when we left for the realty office. Bad timing as usual, but I broke the curse. Anyways, we're going to wrap that up. I know we haven't had any spoots with Marianne yet, but I'm I'm enjoying it. It's it's a spicy story. I kind of wish we saw her expression when she met uh met Lucas <laughs> and Hannah, but I think um it's a pattern I probably should have pointed out. But I think we never have we never go to the same moments from someone else's POV. They always like if you see it through one person's POV, they don't exactly go back through it. They might reference it later, but. Unless it's to pick up the pace because the game is pretty long. But that's it for me, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. And next time on uh, the letter, we're on the 23rd. This is where we fucked up our, uh, our talk with her. And this is when Rose dies. Not too much else happened on this day, but we'll see uh, if Marianne reacts to Rose's death. But until then, that's it. See you next time, bye. Oops.